I've been beta testing this, the Creality CP01. It's a 3D printer, but it's also a CNC engraver and a laser engraver. So is it any good? Creality recently asked me if I wanted to do some beta testing on this. This is the CP01. It's currently configured as a direct drive 3D printer, but in a couple of minutes you can switch between the plug and play heads to make it a CNC engraver or a laser diode engraver as well. Now the reason for me having this is to give Creality some feedback on the early version. They didn't even ask me to do a video, but I thought I'd like to make one because as a machine for a hobbyist, it ticks most of the boxes. Let's start by looking at the specs and then go bit by bit through my experience with this machine. So here is the product page for the CP01, and as it says, it's a three-in-one modular 3D printer. The base price is 700 US dollars, but that will vary depending on the warehouse that you select. For instance, it's on sale for 100 US dollars cheaper, but it's not quite ready to ship yet from there. The key feature of the machine is the fact that it can be a 3D printer, laser engraver, and CNC cutter with these interchangeable heads. Important stats are the build volume with 200 millimeters cubed, and the design of the frame differs from other Creality printers. You can see it's got dual Z-axis lead screws, but they're actually up to the top. The other thing you might notice is that all of the belts are concealed, and that's a good thing for a CNC machine where we want them out of the way and not collecting debris. This machine comes with a very similar touchscreen to the CR10S Pro and the CR10 Max, and it's got some of the same features such as resuming printing after a power outage. That's it for this summary, let's concentrate on showcasing these features as it was delivered to me. This machine was well packaged and everything arrived in good condition. Assembly was really straightforward. You attach the upper gantry to the lower base, four bolts on each side, and then two bolts for two sets of end stops, the filament holder on top of the machine, and then plug in all the electronics. The instructions were easy to read and everything was clearly labelled, this was a quite straightforward task. The default configuration for the machine is as a 3D printer, and it was nice to see there was lots of spares left over. The LCD is very similar to that found on the CR10S Pro and Max, with the welcome sound that people either love or hate. The main difference in the menus on this printer is the head selection option. It may seem like they're for selecting which head is in place, but it doesn't really work like that. More on that later on. Apart from this, all of the menus you would expect are in place, moving around the printer, heating it up, assisted leveling, and fortunately, a way to turn down the annoying beeps. On the SD card, we have an operation movie. It goes for around eight minutes, and honestly, it's pretty good. Anything that wasn't obvious in the manual was very clear after watching this video. We have three pieces of 3D printing G-code, including a flexi cat, a Pikachu, and a little bunny rabbit with a little bit of support at the front. Apart from that, we have an electronic copy of the user manual, software, including Creality Slicer for 3D printing and Creality Workshop for CNC and laser. And finally, a model folder full of STLs, I guess that we can test print. I decided to start things off by printing some of the pre-sliced G-code on the SD card. The direct drive extruder has this big thumb lever and it's really easy to heat up the nozzle, pull on the lever and then manually push the filament through, ready to print. Bed leveling is manual but there is an LCD screen to move the nozzle to five different points and then you use the age old technique where you put the paper underneath and adjust the thumb wheels until it just touches. I'm very pleased to report that the SD card is full size instead of micro and from it I selected my first test print and I chose the Pikachu. The LCD lets you tweak the parameters after the print has started and gives the usual information mid-print. The form factor of that direct extruder is pretty bulky and it makes it difficult to see how well the first layer is going down. No surprise then that my first print wasn't quite adhering properly and it came loose and failed. After a minor adjustment, the reprint was great and separated easily from the glass base. White filament is pretty good at hiding imperfections, but take my word for it, this is a pretty clean print. Good surface finish and no retraction problems or wisping between the ears. My next print was also off the SD card with the bunny and once again this is a very nice print. The only real issues I can see are some cooling issues on the steep overhangs underneath the bottom. Apart from that, very clean. Next up, I thought I'd try the pre-configured slicer 
So I followed the directions in the instruction manual to set up a custom machine with the correct dimensions. This is an older version of Cura, skinned by Creality, and it's got all of the slicing settings already in place. I loaded up an STL, it was a little race car designed by one of my students to be a prize for the primary school kids. I was able to scale it down 50%, as you can see the slicing happens automatically, and there's something a little bit funky with the print preview, because it only shows the top layers, but if you do scroll down, you can see that everything you expect will be printed underneath. Overall, I'd say this slicing package is pretty beginner friendly, and the results were just as good as the test prints. Smooth surfaces, well refined details, no stringing, and a repeatable first layer, as shown by my multiple prints. With some successful 3D printing under my belt, I decided to try out the laser engraving function. I'm pleased to report that changing between these different tool heads can be achieved in around one to two minutes. There's a VGA connector on top with two thumb screws to loosen and then another three thumb screws at the back of the carriage, two at the top, one at the bottom, and once these are undone, the tool head can be removed. Inside the laser tool head, it's pretty simple. There's a laser diode mounted on a plate and it's just like the ones I've covered before on this channel that you can add to your 3D printer. Reinstallation is the exact reverse of what we did before. Attach the three thumb screws at the rear and then replug in the VGA connector and we're ready to go. From this point onwards, you should have your green laser safety goggles in place. And that's because as soon as you hit that laser button, it turns the laser diode on. Each time you fit it, you'll need to raise the head to around 60 millimeters and then twist the focus ring to get the smallest spot possible. The Creality Workshop software was just as easy to use as the 3D printing slicer. With laser, and in this case black and white selected, we pick a JPEG and then adjust the slider until we get the desired contrast. The images seem to import way too large, but we'll adjust that soon. We also have an outline mode, which traces the preview on screen. And finally, grayscale mode, which doesn't have a slider, but converts the image to be much more graduated than the black and white version. Our output can be dragged from the corner, paying attention to the dimensions on the right hand side to make sure it fits on the work area. After that, you should move it back to the top left. Creality Workshop doesn't make it clear where the starting origin point is, but if I preview the G-code in another piece of software, I can see that it's in the lower left hand side. Before we engrave, our job is therefore to move the print head to the lower left hand corner of the timber and then zero the machine with the button on the LCD. Once again, this was pretty straightforward and my first test engrave produced pretty good results. This Bruce Lee picture is in black and white mode at a speed of 20 millimeters per second. There's plenty of smoke, so besides having on your glasses, you need to work in a well ventilated area. The final result is pretty clean, and this image, which is 140 millimeters tall, was completed in 42 minutes. You can get some smoke build up on the glass, but fortunately it cleans off easily with paper towel. My first attempt at grayscale was far too faint to be seen, but I was able to fix this pretty easily by going to the export setting and lowering the laser slash CNC speed down from 20 to 10 millimeters per second. After this, I re-exported to the SD card. Second time around, with the slower speed, the results were much, much better. The power of the laser is fixed. Therefore, to control the strength or darkness of the engraving, the speed is what we change, and this is important for configuring for different materials. The final result was a faithful representation of my friend Chuck, this one completing in a little under half an hour. My final test was the outline mode, and instead of scanning horizontally across the image, you can see this one traces a path around. For the majority of designs, it's going to be much, much quicker, with this car outline taking only two minutes. I think with some trial and error, you could probably cut out paper, but not really anything thicker using this technique. Next up, CNC. The machine comes with a separate base and clamps to hold down your workpiece. Before you fit it to the machine, you need to put the screws through from beneath in whatever position suits your material the best, and then from the top, put the clamps in place, the little black retainer, and finally the wing nuts. This system works fairly well, but it is possible for the screws to spin at the same time as the wing nuts, meaning you have to hold them with one hand while you tighten the wing nuts with the other. This clamping base goes in place of the Creality glass. The surfaces can be interchanged by sliding out the two clips at the front, lifting up the old surface, and then wiggling it out side to side to remove. The new one goes in exactly the same way, except of course in reverse. This system should be sufficient for very light milling like we're doing. The machine comes with a single 1mm diameter end mill. 
It's fitted into the chuck on the end of the electric motor and this works exactly like a drill. You place it with your fingers before tightening the chuck with the included key. Just like the laser, when you push the CNC button, the motor will turn on. So ensure everything is clear before doing this. After putting Creality Workshop into CNC mode, we can only load JPEGs once again, and we have a slider to once again select the sensitivity of the contrast. When we click the button, we can see an outline is created that will be machined. We still need to resize our object down, once again looking at the dimensions on the right, and then we need to move it up to the top left, just like we did with the laser engraving function. The export settings are extra critical here. There's three values that really count. The CNC Travel Z is how much it'll lift up to move to new areas. The CNC Print Z is how far it will cut in. And finally, the laser slash CNC speed is the actual feed rate of the cutting action. I once again chose to validate my toolpath in a program called Camodix, which is linked in the description. And the best part is it's free. To get an accurate preview, we need to right click and add a new tool matching that that's fitted to the machine. In this case, one millimeter diameter by three millimeter length. After this is in place, we can hit the refresh button up the top to recalculate the toolpath. And now we should have an accurate representation of what the finished job is going to look like. If you like, you can also hit the play button to animate your toolpath in order. On some CNC jobs, this is critical because you need to see that surface details are engraved before the exterior profile is cut loose. The other thing to note here is that the origin is once again in the lower left hand side. So we need to position our tool head just like we did with the laser engraving, except this time we need to position the Z axis as well. The end mill is particularly fragile, so it's important to creep up bit by bit, slowly lowering it until it's just touching the surface of the workpiece. I like to spin it by hand as I lower it down, then it's obvious to see when the tip is cutting the paper. We can now zero the machine and start the CNC job. Here I'm running a depth of cut of 0.25 millimeters with a feed rate of five millimeters per second. The big difference here between 3D printing and laser engraving is the debris. As you can see, when the job is finished, there's quite a mess around and a shop vac is a good tool to have to clean it up before pulling anything off the bed. The finished result isn't too bad. The overall shape is being created accurately, but you'll notice some of the detail is missing and that's because I snapped the original cutter and had to switch to one of a slightly wider diameter. Small CNC bits are very cheap to get online so I'd recommend building up a small collection. Creality Workshop is quite limited in what it offers for the CNC side, but the machine does take regular G-code, which means you can generate G-code by following the tutorials in my previous budget CNC video. And this is exactly what I did to attempt cutting a PCB. The feed rate shown here was way too fast for this machine, and I snapped the tips off a few engraving bits attempting to make this part. So I slowed down the feed rate dramatically, but still experienced some deflection. You can see here in slow motion that the tip of the cutter is flexing from side to side as it completes the circle. In the end, I did manage to complete the PCB, but to get it really accurate, I would need to slow down the feed rates even more. So I would say you can do PCBs, but they're going to take quite a long time. So we have excellent 3D printing results, good laser engraving results, and a CNC function that works, but can definitely be improved. Before I finished, I wanted to test a few other things that I thought could be compromised in this type of machine. Firstly, the potential for the machine to clog up with debris from CNC machining. I'm pleased to report that there are no cooling ducts on the upper side of the machine, and therefore it's easy to vacuum down. Furthermore, the belt tensioning system is well concealed and keeps the outside of the machine very tidy. My main concern was safety and Creality has achieved the minimum by including the safety glasses and some warnings. I've suggested that Creality add a warning to put the glasses on on this screen, so users know that the laser will be turned on as soon as they press the button. And on top of that, I'll add my own warning that even though you're wearing safety glasses, on an unconcealed machine like this, you need to be aware of other people walking into the room and take appropriate precautions. My other concern was with the removable heads that some of the 3D printer safety functions would be turned off to cope with this. Despite running a very unusual version number of Marlin, I was relieved to find that the machine was halted if the thermistor was disconnected, and that most importantly, this machine was chipped with thermal runaway protection. This has been in Marlin for years, but this is the first Creality printer I've ever tested with it in place. Thank you Creality for finally getting this right. 
So after some time checking out all of the advertised features, I'd have to say this does a fairly reasonable job. As a 3D printer, it's quite capable and the bundled software makes it pretty easy for a beginner to get up and going. Changing between the different tool heads is pretty straightforward and in laser engraving mode, I was able to get pretty good results without too much fiddling. At the moment, the weakest link is as a CNC engraver. It's just not rigid enough to do any type of rigorous engraving. But if you are patient, you can slow down the feed rate and you should be able to achieve some good results. Now this machine compared to a separate standalone 3D printer, CNC router or laser cutter, it's not gonna be as good as any of those dedicated machines. If you already had one of those machines, you likely wouldn't be purchasing that, but for someone starting out that wants to get into all three of these hobbies, it's probably a pretty good machine. Probably the main thing that might trip up new users is that there is a little bit of play when you change over the heads, so you can expect to re-level the bed every time you reconfigure it as a 3D printer. Is this a concept that you think is worthwhile? Please let me know down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing, CNC engraving, and laser engraving. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.